we are currently sailing west to get as far away from Gibraltar as possible before we will turn south and head towards our patrol area. I am very glad that our resupply operation in Cadiz went off without a hitch. As far as I can tell, we have not been spotted by anybody and we have managed to replenish our stores. Our fuel tanks have been topped up and we have received food and water for many weeks. On top of that, we have also received a few torpedoes. We now have five torpedoes on board. Our navigator Horst Haag complains that we can't really achieve much with five torpedoes. Emmo and me look at each other and we have to suppress a laugh. We will remember our time on U8. Five torpedoes was all that the little Type 2 submarine could carry to sea. And that's what we went out with. Navigator Haag is still relatively new. This is the first submarine that he has served on. But he won't endear himself to the old crew if he makes comments like those. For now, we are continuing our journey. And for once, I am very glad to be in such bad weather. It means that the enemy airplanes stationed in Gibraltar won't be able to find us. As far as I am concerned, the weather can stay like this until we are well out of their range. Finally, we have reached DH-44, our patrol area a few hundred kilometers northwest of the Canary Islands. After all that has so far happened on this patrol, I had started to doubt that we will ever make it to this position. But now we are finally here, and it is our task to make sure that no enemy ship can pass through this area. It is now up to the diligent and motivated watch crew to make sure that nothing can sneak past us. A few days have passed without any sightings, and the weather has worsened considerably. A whole enemy convoy could sail by us and we wouldn't be able to see it. Obviously this is not a good thing for us, and we dive frequently to check for sound contacts and to give the crew an opportunity to rest. But even if we should be able to hear an enemy ship, I very much doubt that we would be able to engage it in these conditions, not with the very limited visibility. I don't think we have another choice but to weather the storm until conditions improve. Conditions have improved. The sea is now calm and peaceful. We are continuing our patrol, slowly sailing through these waters, ever vigilant for any potential enemy targets. The visibility is good, and enemy land-based aircraft can't reach us out here. The crew is relaxed, and the atmosphere is very peaceful. The crew keeps itself busy by performing routine tasks and routine maintenance. We are keeping the boat in good shape. But everything happens without the underlying nervousness and urgency that is present when we are in waters where we know that enemy patrols are present. To be honest, it is difficult to keep in mind that we are at war and that the destruction of enemy ships is what we are here for. Seeing the same empty horizon and performing the same tasks day in and day out makes it easy to forget that. The mind simply becomes numb to that fact and you start to feel like you are on a training cruise instead of a war patrol. But this kind of thinking is dangerous. When you think like that, when you develop these patterns, this is when you let your guard down and when you can be really surprised by the enemy with disastrous consequences. It is my duty to prevent that. But as I said, it is not easy. Even I have the feeling that the war is happening without us at the moment. The radio is our connection to it and we hear from convoy battles happening west of England and the western approaches. Fierce battles, with many ships being sunk. Receiving the reports from these battles gives me a weird feeling. I long to be there. I long to be a part of that. But that feeling is completely irrational. 
I should be glad, no, I should be ecstatic to be far away from these dangerous and life-threatening situations. We had our fair share of close calls. And sooner or later, our luck is bound to run out. So why am I not glad to be away from all that? Why would I rather be there, fight for my life, sink enemy ships and kill enemy sailors? There is a word for that. Kriegslust. Lust for war. And it has infected us all. What has this war done to our minds? And what will it continue to do to us? Day in, day out, sailing through the same waters, over and over again, looking for enemy ships that are nowhere to be seen. I am now convinced that Command has made an error by sending us to this area. There is nothing here, there won't be anything here. Nothing is sailing through here, we are simply wasting our time. I am getting restless, the crew is getting numb, I finally have to do something. We send out a radio message, listing our available fuel, torpedoes and provisions, and ask to be assigned to a new patrol area. The message is acknowledged, and we now have to wait for a decision. The whole boat is silent. You could hear a needle drop on the floorboards. I wish the man could be this quiet when I order silent running to evade enemy destroyers. Nobody is able to focus on their tasks. Everybody is listening with one ear for a report from the radio operator. When we finally do receive a response, it is very disappointing. Our request has been denied. We have to continue patrolling in this area. Day after day passes. They are all the same and they blur into each other. As I lay here and stare at the ceiling, I'm starting to get weird thoughts. Surely Command must know, or by now realize, that this sector is devoid of any shipping. So why have we been sent here? Has somebody arranged to keep us out of the way? Has somebody used his personal clout or political connections? to arrange that we are kept away from any possible opportunities for further success. Is somebody envious of what we have achieved so far? Maybe one of the other U-boat captains wants to make sure that we are losing our top spot on the list of tonnage sunk. Not only are these thoughts inappropriate, they are downright ridiculous. Or are they? I mean, what if these thoughts are true? What would be the implications? Or is this monotony making me lose my ability to think rationally? Am I becoming paranoid? Am I losing my mind?